I'm Nancy Stokey from the Economics Department. Um, I want to ask you two questions that both have to do with economic growth. One is we know that some of the East Asian economic co uh, countries that have had economic miracles, in those countries, international trade was a big part of their growth. You mentioned China, but the same was true in Taiwan and Hong Kong, and, uh, Korea. So I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more explicitly about the role that you see for uh, international trade and foreign direct investment in India. And the other question is related a little bit, and that is that if we look at, say, Korea, Taiwan, and China, they both had spectacular growth under you know, completely non-democratic regimes. Just, yeah. Korea and Taiwan were not democracies during their periods of rapid growth. And if you could talk a little bit more about what you think are the specific uh, problems of becoming a growth miracle as a democracy. Yeah, uh, 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 both, both terrific questions. So o o o on the first, uh, <clears throat> I think it's, it's forgotten that, you know, India between, say, 2002 and 2012 <clears throat> grew at almost 9 to 9.5%, nine almost for a decade. And that period was associated with uh, uh, 20 to 25 percent annual dollar growth of goods and services. So, so therefore, my view is unambiguous that if India has to grow at 8 to 10 percent, you know, which convergence gives us the scope to do, we will have to have exports of that margin, uh, of that magnitude. What may be different in India's case is that we don't do that kind of accessing global markets in manufacturing necessarily because we haven't done as well but perhaps in services is where we could capture similar rates of growth in uh, just to give you some orders of magnitude our services export growth I is almost almost our manufacturing uh, export growth so 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 we could so so the notion that india can post all this without the kind of growth rates that the East Asians posted, uh, I, I think is, is just complete uh, fantasy, and therefore we need to do that. Um, uh, <clears throat> the second question, um, and I can, I mean, uh, and FDI is going to be a part of that, uh, uh, and I think we are seeing much more FDI into India than uh, not quite on the scale of China. China at its peak was getting $100 billion in FDI. We are now getting about $50 billion, maybe even $60 billion in FDI. So, so we're kind of getting there. The second question, I think, is, is a, 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 a terrific question, something that uh, you know, I, I think about a lot. I do think that uh, there is a kind of democracy tax on development. And let me give you one ma example of that. <clears throat> when a country which is becomes, uh, you know, adopts universal franchise as India did, uh, when it's very poor and very socially fragmented, what happens is that there is a demand for redistribution very, very early on in the development process. Right? Point number one. Point number two. Not only is there a demand for redistribution, but the ability to do redistribution, you know, 45, 50 years ago without the kind of, is actually very weak. State capacity to do redistribution is very weak. Therefore, our redistributive policies took the form basically, uh, or many of them, price distortions. You've distorted, because prices became an instrument for redistribution because you don't have better yeah. ways of doing it. Today, you can substitute prices with other things. So I think just that, the fact that there was a huge demand, because uh, you know, when you're very poor, inequality is high, poverty is high, you know, demand for redistribution is high. Uh, and therefore, we got into these policies, which have, have still stuck with us, extracted a lot of efficiency costs, and exit from which is proving very difficult. So it's not that you know you can kind of do this and then get it out at some stage in development. So I think that's been a, 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 a big part of, of India's problem. And, and I think we're still paying the price for it. And I think now with technology, with the ability to do income transfers more easily, I think we have a, a better way of tr hoping to get, you, get out. I, I think I've read you think that 
uh, there could be a meaningful universal basic income that would be budget neutral if you got rid of 950 different subsidy programs? Right. Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, this is just at the center. As I yeah. said, the states have their own yeah. programs as well. Yeah. So if you could even, you know, uh, substitute some of those distortionary policies with direct income yeah. uh, transfers, uh, I, I think we should, uh, we should be. But, but I, I do think that, you know, there is a kind of, uh, a, 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 not just a democracy tax, but a poor democracy tax on development.